Means Committee. Today, he left a Hamilton County courtroom in handcuffs. His attorneys pulled out all the stops trying to get the judge to give him just probation, but it didn't work. Remember the sentencing memo where we talk about his humble beginnings, where he learned a strong work ethic and the value of community service <coughs> in his family. Think about his working class upbringing in Butler, Pennsylvania, his mom's restaurant, his enlistment in the United States Marine Corps during Vietnam. It's left to you, Your Honor, to impose responsibility on this man for the lies he told the investors and for the damage he caused to public officials statewide. Because when the chairman of the Ohio House Ways and Means Committee is convicted seven times for perjury to lie in the three state agents, the palpable stench of this honor reeks statewide. Local 12's Rich Jaffe broke this story three years ago. He joins us now with the story of the Madera couple who got the entire investigation rolling. Rich. Cammie, both our investigation and the one involving the State Division of Security started with complaints from local investors Tom and Tina Walter. They maintained from the time their investments tanked, the reason they dumped their life savings into what proved to be fraudulent companies was because Pete Beck, the mayor, the state rep, and a CPA told them those investments were solid. He lied, and they all lost. Tom and Tina Walter bared their financial and personal souls in court today one more time. They listened as Pete Beck's lead attorney talked about what an honorable man his client was. They listened as an assistant attorney general put a bow on his case to send the man they trusted with their life savings to prison. Then it was Tina Walter's turn. Not a day goes by that the enormity of our loss is not on our minds. We still wake in the middle of the night worrying about the bills that need to be paid and where that money will come from. We have no financial cushion and are just making ends meet. This is our new normal. Through it all, Beck officially said nothing, never an apology, never a word in his own defense. Because of Pete Beck's lies and deceit, we have lost our IRAs, our children's college funds, and our savings. We were forced to pay our children's college tuition with credit cards and now face tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt. We can only afford to make minimum payments every month. Our credit is ruined. While Beck talked extensively to me on camera in 2012, he had nothing more to say as he left court in handcuffs. Are you sorry now? Tom Walter and I first sat down on camera in the summer of 2012. After the hearing today, we sat down again. Mr. Beck chose to uh, take it to the mat and he lost the gamble. While Pete Beck was never concerned about damage to the Walter family, today they were kinder. Sitting in court today next to his family, I mean, your heart has to go out to his family. I mean, it's a very difficult thing to see your father, your husband, your good friend led away in handcuffs. But Pete Beck had every opportunity to avoid this. He was asked a number of times to enter plea deals and didn't do it. This case is far from over for anyone. There's a huge civil lawsuit filed by the investors against Beck and the accounting firm he worked for. While the judge declared Beck indigent, the expectation is his firm's insurance company will make the investors whole to some degree. And as we have reported, they will also get $250,000 from Ark by the River. That's a church involved in this case, which Ohio's attorney general has called a cult. Beck was the accountant for that church. Cammie? Rich, thank you. All of Beck's indicted co-conspirators took plea deals in exchange for testifying against him. Two of them, Chip Des Moines and John Fussner, will be sentenced next Tuesday. Pete Beck is the only one expected to do any prison time.